Hello and welcome to this release and replenish ceremony, which is being um, crafted for you at the time of the waning moon. It's really, really good to use for the waning moon and also at the time of the autumn equinox here in the northern hemisphere. And its, it's purpose is really around that um, releasing old stagnant energy, those things that are, are, are we are done with and making space for new possibilities, new potential um, creativity, opportunities to come into your life. So we're gonna do this ceremony together. And in order for you to participate in the ceremony, I am going to recommend that you have um, two things to hand. Um, you're also going to need to be in a, a space where you're comfortable doing some movement. And if you feel like it, um, using your voice, that's an optional extra. What I'm going to ask you to do, not now, but um, in a moment, and I'll tell you when, is to get a representation of the element of fire. So I have a little um, candle here for my element of fire and a representation of the element of earth. So I've got a crystal here. And the reason that we're going to be doing that is because we are working with two runes. So we are bang in the half month of Kenaz, right in the middle of the half month of Kenaz at the autumn equinox, um, which is this rune here, the rune of um, creativity, the rune of enlightenment, the rune of the forge. It's also the rune of physical manifestation. And that is, you can think about this, sometimes it's called the saw or the ulcer and people go, ooh. But if you think about it as a, as a healing process or the manifestation of whatever is um, inside us that needs to come out, like a, a bruise, for example, you know, needs to come out. It can also symbolize the healing process. We've got a lot in it. This is our primary patron. But when I created this um, ceremony for you, I asked my um, Dissia and the Nornia to come forward and to basically sort of say what it is that's needed. And what they've created is something that uses the, the Kenaz rune, but also brings in the energy of the Bacano rune here, which is very much the rune of the divine feminine, of um, the birch tree, of newness, of vitality, new life coming through. Now, interestingly, these runes for um, Kenaz is the autumn equinox rune. Bacano is the spring equinox rune. And I reckon that you could use this ceremony at the spring equinox as well. Um, to really release the old and see as I'm ready to step into the new, as well as at the waning moon or any time really that you need to do um, releasing and reclaiming. So your representations um, honour these two runes. The Kenaz rune, as I said, I've got a flame. And the Bacano rune, I wanted to share the reason I chose this um, stone. I've been using this as my own, uh, as a healing stone for a long time. I used to be able to tell you what it's called. I think it's a sort of, orange calcite with bits in but I always called it when I used to do a crystal healer I used to work with clients my Bacano rune because it's got this sort of um B shape in it sort of Bacano shape interestingly an Ingu's rune there on the on the back but for whatever reason it's called Bacano stone which means that I forgot the technical name for the stone but it always feels to me it resonates with Bacano and um, it's really just to honor the runes and to invite their energies um in so you might also want to have a notebook to hand so that when we go through the um, the movement work and the voice work together, you can then record any experiences that you have that you, you know, you always, we always think we're going to remember, don't we? We always think, oh, yeah, I definitely remember that. And then the day later, you're like, oh, what's that? What came up during that? So absolutely. Um, so now is the time. Get yourself a, a glass of water as well. It's always a good idea. Get yourself um, a representation of earth and fire. It could just be a stone from your garden. It could be a plant. It's absolutely fine. Um, if you work with the Bacano rune, you'll probably have some sort of thoughts on you know, what works well and for you. Same with Kenaz. So full permission to pause me at this moment and assemble your things ready for this ceremony or to say, actually, I'm going to do this a little bit later in the day and to, and to come back to me. Full question to do that. And then back we come. Okay, so I'm going to work on the assumption now that you have your representation of fire and your representation of earth. You've got yourself all sorted. You've got water, whatever you need. You've got a little bit of privacy if you want that um, to do this work, which we're going to do together. So let's talk a little bit more about, um, about Kenaz. So with Kenaz, being as it is a sort of the, the hinge of the wheel of the, uh, in the wheel of the year with the autumn equinox, there is this sense of balance. And it always reminds me that in order to create, we need to destroy. If you think about a flame, a flame needs fuel. It needs the element of earth, you know, some form of physical fuel, and it needs the element of air, it needs oxygen as well, um, in order to have, in order to have life, essentially. 
And it brings in all sorts of things around the partnership between like the human consciousness and the world around us. If we think about this, the Smith and the Forge and like books, reading, um, bringing lots of thoughts through all of the time. So you think about yourself at the beginning of this lunar cycle. You might have set um, lots of intentions for yourself, or it might be the beginning of the of the year for you, or the beginning of the week, whatever it is. And you're like, "Yay, it's all going to be brilliant!" And I want to do all of these things. And then, you know, stuff gets in the way, and then my disappointment might might happen, or worries might come in, and we can get overwhelmed with almost like the energy of the Smith, in a sense. You know, the creative self is sort of trying to create and do all of this stuff and we get to the point where our fuel runs dry you know and that just happens doesn't it it could also be that our creative process runs dry and like, no right, I was there and, and now I'm not and we need to release that old creative process and say right I'm done with that wherever it is have you got any projects hanging about that you haven't finished it could be really hard can't it but energetically they can really hold on to us if we don't say right I'm ready to release you and maybe new ideas will come through for that project. But if we don't do that release work, it doesn't um, it doesn't happen. So there's lots that we're going to be working with the Kinas rune and with this idea of fire. And then we have our Bacano rune here, which is that um, it's the fuel that we're going to be working with because we're going to be raising energy with the Kinas rune and working with it through the body. And it's a gentle, this is a very gentle meditation. But if we simply draw on the element of air, if we're... Um, well, breathing or even like singing the runes and we draw on the energy from our own bodies and don't take anything externally then we run the risk of burning out so this is very much about rebalancing uh, whether you're doing this through the lunar cycle at the end of the waning moon or you're doing it because you're feeling a little bit like wow you know I, I've been working really 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 hard and I'm a bit knackered or you're doing it through the wheel of the year um, then we can use this, but we draw on the element of Earth, the Kano rune, which is why the Desir and the Norni, when they were saying, this is what you're going to be doing, Maggie, um, offered me this ritual. And they said, you need the Bacano rune, you need those roots. So the only other thing I wanted to say is one of the reasons why I went to the Desir and the Norni, as I said to them, um, I want to do you know, a release and replenishment ritual that people can use you know, over and over again. And what I'd like to think about is um, I was journaling on how weird and karma are different because we can talk about releasing negative um, karma, aren't we? I mean, to release negative karma. And I was like, can we release negative weird? I sort of went to them with this question, really interesting um, responses. And I do not claim to have all of the answers by any means. You know, I certainly don't know everything about karma. I know a fair amount about weird, but there's an awful lot still there but they had a, they had some interesting answers for me so they said you know there is are some similarities but it doesn't quite work in quite the same way so they said we can work on the assumption that our weird is flowing in a particular direction because of events that have happened in the past which then influence what's going to happen in the future you know, as well as stuff that you know just falls into our laps that's part of the universe's plan but what we can work on is um, we can do ancestral work, we can do past life work that brings in things like the force of Herminia, which is the force of luck, allows more energy to flow from our ancestors and from our past selves to us in the present moment. And that will impact on our weird. And we can also do work around things like um, intention settings. So if you've done the symbol right with me or with others, um, you will know that that act of powerfully setting intentions and then following through with them, creating positive cycles in your life can impact on weird as well. So you know, they gave me some interesting stuff, you know, just giving you a few tidbits there. But they said, we can't go in necessarily and intentionally change the flow of weird by interacting with its energy. It's just too big. It's too sort of everywhere and interwoven through every aspect of our lives to do that as a like a channeled process that we would do in a in a ritual there would need to be something specific like doing past life bit now or I'm setting an intention but they said what we you can do is you can work with your runes because the runes are each a specific energetic force that works very much in connection with the flow of weird and the uh, the law of orlog uh, which we won't talk about in massive detail today because we're focusing on on weird I'm um, 
feel free to get in touch with me or look at some of my other work around Orlog there. And because they are more um, finite and because they are specifically designed to act as a bridge between the, like you might call them the divine forces, the energy of life, the great tapestry of the cosmos and us as individual beings. If you think about Odin, he hung on the world tree, he went and did a journey that none of us could do and he emerged with the runes as the foundation stones of our language. So all of those things around, you know, these are the meanings that are my ancestors are passed on about who I am and what I want to do and all of the oaths that I make about what I want to do moving forward. And I feel those are made of the runes. But what we're going to do is we're going to work with them as primal forces of energy. So we're working with these two very creative runes, one of which takes the raw material of life and intentionally shapes it into something else with the key nerves room. And the other of which is the generator of life, sort of earth force incarnate, the great mother that provides that unending supply of energy and is a much more um, organic evolutionary force for manifestation. So they're both manifestor runes, but they work in different ways. And we can work with them um, to support the, the energetic release that will then allow our weird to flow more. You might think about this, they said, you know, there's no, I don't think that there's such a thing as negative energy per se, or as negative weird. Um, but what there, I would say that probably is, is um, energy that's in the wrong place. You know, all of my intentions that I had three weeks ago at the new moon were great at that point, but I'm not the same person that I was three weeks ago. Life is not in the same place as it was. Some of those things will have burnt out. They will have run their course. If you think about a fire burning, some of those things that I put in that fire originally will already have um, burnt and they will have been used and there will be ash that's then clogging up the fire. So still might be held in my body. Maybe I've had to move into conflict or do things that were difficult. And if I haven't done that release process, I might still be carrying around all that ash as well as those bits of fuel that for whatever reason just don't burn. You know, we have to clear out the fire grate in order for new fuel to be put in. And we need to... I don't know, I love making fires. That's one of my favorite things to do. Sometimes we need to turn the, the, the fuel to find the glowing embers underneath. So we are adding more fuel with our Bacano rune and we are blowing on the embers with our Kinaz rune and we are releasing all of the old stuff, okay? So the way that we're going to do this is I've created a, um, a, a Galdra, a, a song that combines the Kinaz rune and the Bacano rune for you. And I'm going to be playing it and we're going to be um, moving with it together. This is not a in your head, I'm now going to list all of the things that I didn't work for me properly and get rid of them. No, we're working on the assumption that all of those things that we need to release, they are in the body. So we're going to do a meditation to connect with the earth to start with. So we're connecting with our Bacano force so that you have a really lovely supply of delicious earth energy coming into your body. And then we're going to start working with the key now, and we're going to do that through movement. And it's going to be very small. These are going to be micro movements. So we're going to be listening to the, the song and you can um, sing along with me or you can whisper. So you might whisper Kinaz, Kinaz. And you're just going to have a little bit of an explore with your body. Where feels a bit tight right now? And you might want to close your eyes to do that. Where feels a little bit tight right now? Oh, you know, so I'm feeling my shoulders here. I can feel a bit of tension in the shoulders there. And I'm not going to do a big movement. I'm just in a very small movement to release and I'd like you to imagine that your that this is like the, the fire where there's ash and so it's almost like as you move you're very gently letting that ash just um descend it's literally just you know you're, you're blowing on it it's wafting away it's falling back down to the earth where it will go and nourish the next bits but you know mother earth will do that for us we don't need to do that ourselves a little bit of attention so these are very tiny movements this is not exercise this is just moving saying okay so now I'm feeling into the back of my neck gently no and it might even be that I mean I'm exaggerating my movements a little bit so that you can see that on the screen but 
if I was doing this and we weren't doing it on the screen, you might not even notice that I was moving. Or would I feel anything on my tongue and my cheeks? So you're trusting your seer self who knows and your healer self to just allow you to move. There is nothing you can get wrong here. I'm going to move my hips ever so slightly, just backwards and forwards. And just as you're with the kinas rune, you can whisper kinas, kinas, or you could do which a little soft sound. And almost as if you're sort of tapping, you know, sort of just brushing off. If you feel that you want to brush off, go ahead, just do that. Right? And then as the song progresses, and you're more than welcome to play it more than once, I'm going to start noticing that as you do that tapping, you start to become more aware of, okay, so there are the bits where I feel a bit of tension. I feel a little bit stuck. And here are the places in my body where now I'm sort of exposing that, um, those, those embers, you know, that sort of slightly golden embers. So you might move from that tapping into more of a kinas, kinas. And as you do so, Really feel into that energy of the flame. And this is a gentle flame. This is not a roaring fire. No, this is, we haven't even got to the, like the new moon yet or whatever it is. We are releasing. We haven't even gone into the winter phase yet of, you know, of total rest. This is just a kindling of the flame. So when I do this, I sometimes feel the sort of golden, orange, molten energy just moving through me and moving from my heart and extending out sometimes I get almost like little candle flames on the tips of my fingers and I just sort of let them flicker on my fingers a little bit but this isn't this isn't a hot intense experience you know if you feel any heat or intensity you just sort of say oh you know that's great thanks Kinez and um and then we'll come back and we will root back in and if ever you feel a little bit lightheaded, you're like, oh, I don't know what's going on there. Just remember those roots. We're going to do that energetic rooting first of all. So you can just take a moment and go, okay, and I'm still, this roots are still there and the Bacano energy is still coming in and filling me with that lovely fuel. So we're going to do that um, together. Um, so I'll be here doing that with you. I'll talk you in first and I'll talk you out at the end um, of, the, of the piece. So this is... Um, yeah, don't feel like oh, I have to wait for a special occasion to do this. If you feel like actually I could really do with doing this um, meditation, you can use it at any time. OK, so with that, if you haven't lit your candle, if you've got a candle um, or you might have a picture of a flame, that's absolutely fine. My stone is like a, looks like a flame. But whatever it is, just activate your um, element of fire right now. Um, so I say you know, I've got my little candle here. And then you're going to activate your earth, whatever it is that you've got there. So you might want to hold it for a minute or just um, say thank you very much to it. And then we're just going to trust them that they're going to hold our space for us. And I like to think that through this little flame and the element of earth, fire and earth coming together, we're activating the energy of the hearth. And this is the safe hearth. This is the hearth that is held and supported by your Odysseus circle, your circle of um, ancestral feminine spirits who are the nourishers, the nurturers, you know? Um, if your name's not down, you're not coming in. They're the on, only those who have your best interests at heart are gathering around your half flame at this point, and we're holding them. So you don't need to worry about that at all at this point. So you can do this standing. You can do it um, seated. Make sure if you do that, that you are still giving yourself enough space to, um, to move a little bit if you need to. Please do manage your own energy. You know, you know where your limits are. As I said, this is not a big, I don't be seeing any big movements going on here. These are tiny, tiny movements. But even if that, you go, oh, my shoulder's a bit tense there. Okay. That's just your body telling you this. I need might need a bit of TLC. I might need some help. I might need a massage or a chiropractor or something like that. This isn't a, you know, now I'm going to really work on this one right now. So you're just allowing your body to tell you how it wants to move. Okay, so making yourself comfortable. If you need to take a sip of water, do that now. If you need to have a, um, get yourself an extra blanket or take the blanket off, um, you can do so. If you get hot during the course of this meditation, don't be surprised. Or if you can get any temperature fluctuation, to be honest, with Kina. As most people experience it as heat, but occasionally people experience it as cold. There's nothing wrong with the way that you are experiencing this piece at this time. So just as a reminder, here are our two runes. You don't need to know them well in order to participate in this, but if you do, 
you know, by all means, sing along with me, like, work with me through the, the, the course of the song. So just allowing yourself to become present in your body. You can see that I've closed my eyes and my invitation to you is to close your eyes. It's often easier to um, center and to focus when you do that. You might take a moment just to put your hands over your heart, just to feel that place of stillness. And also if you feel as if you're, you've spent a lot of time up in your head, it's a little bit like just your heart inviting your conscious self to just sink that little bit deeper into the heart space right now. Just breathing. Just feeling the rise and fall of the lungs. Knowing that all of the time that you're breathing, you're adding that fuel of, of oxygen to your keen as flame. I'm going to spend a little bit of attention now on our, our connection to the earth. So as I said, we've opened up the heart. You might want to bring your attention down to your torso, the solar plexus, down into the pelvis, into the pelvic bowl, just a little bit, and then down to your legs. And if you're standing, just check that your feet are, you want them to be about a hip's width apart because you want to feel really steady, particularly if you are closing your eyes. And if you haven't done so already, and apologies, I probably should have said this before, it's always helpful if you're doing something and you're standing with eyes closed to make sure that you've got your near a wall or a chair or something so that if you had a bit of a wobble, you can just reach your hand out and um, get yourself supported if you're seated. Now is the time to just allow yourself to relax into that. So standing, you want your feet, hips width apart, and just allow your knees to soften a little bit. You're going to bring your attention now to the shell of the body, to where your edges are, where your physical edges are right now, to your skin, to your physical shape. You know, very much part of the key now, as rune mysteries here. You know, I said about bruises and things like that, sort of blooming on the body in that way, this space of deep transformation, which is the body. And then I'd like you to extend your consciousness out to your energy body. Now, some people are like, oh, what's my energy body? The way that I like to think about the energy body and how we know where it is, is that you know where the edges of your energy body are. Because if you imagine somebody coming into your space right now, there would come a point if they walked towards you where you would know that they'd entered your personal space. Oh, they're in my personal space right now. How do you know that? You know? because that's where the edge of your energy body is. So you just might want to just imagine that now and just greet those edges. Okay, this is my private space. This is my energy body right now. And just notice that the boundaries of your energy body go down beneath the soles of your feet. In the Northern tradition, the first man and the first woman were made of trees. And I like to think that we still have the roots, you know, that humans still have energetic roots, so I'd like you to pay attention to your roots right now. Just imagine that they are sinking just that little bit deeper into the earth. It doesn't matter even if you're in a, I don't know, 17 story building, your roots are long enough to extend down into the earth there, all the way down through the soil, through past rocks and stones and subterranean streams, all the way down into that sort of molten core and that's warm energy. And we're just gonna imagine that warm energy Birkan, Birkano, coming up, that energy of Mother Earth, rising slowly up your roots. This is not something you need to consciously pay attention to. You know how to do this, just as a plant knows how to extend its roots out, where to find the water, where to find the sustenance. And every time you breathe in, just invite that Earth energy in. Just invite it into your body. Just rising up into your feet and calves and thighs and the pelvic bowl, the chest, the shoulders, all the way down to your fingertips and up to your neck and skull. And then you just have to breathe out. And it might be that you already start to feel as you do that breathing out that the keen as energy is already activating just a little bit. If you wiggle your fingers, a little bit it might be like you're imagining that um, oh just a little bit of ash is already falling away there as the Bacano rune and the Kinaz rune prepare to partner with each other for the beating of your heart pumping the blood around your body 
knowing that every cell in your body has that vibration, it has that um, the electricity that's passing through your nervous system right now is the force of key nerves, bringing that connection to your body, that you are a living network of key nerves energy. Every cell is receiving that and then releasing it back out, receiving and releasing. Your cells know where those little bits of old, spent, burnt up, or just not going to ignite energy are in your body. And we're going to listen to the power song of Kinas and Bacano. I'm going to very, very gently allow the song to enter the body. And then very gently Move your body, trust your body. It might be that you feel it in your shoulders or your hands, your neck or your head. And when you feel that, oh, you know, that feels a little bit tight, just loosening the body, micro movements, tiny movements. And then allowing that keen as fire to build inside you to move where you need to. It might feel molten, it might feel like metal you know, sort of moving through your amber, liquid amber moving through you. It might feel like little flames, it's flickering over your skin. So let's just enjoy the song together. And by all means, you can use that sound if you want to help the keen as energy to release that old energy from your body. Or you can whisper keen as, or if you need that earth energy to come in more, you can feel that you need more of that fuel. You can just say Bacano, just as you intuit at this point. Kinas, 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 Okay. 
to bring your hands so they're resting over your heart or maybe one on your heart and one in your belly just to draw that energy a little bit lower there if you felt any sort of golden flames lapping around you during that allowing that energy to coalesce almost as if it's spiraling inwards now into the area into the spine sort of golden pillar of light in the spine, another rune that we haven't touched on is eyewares, often known as fire's keeper, and it connects us to the spine. Just feeling where the tailbone of your spine is in the way in which it connects into the pelvis and the legs. I'm feeling that connection, that deep, strong connection with the earth. Breathing into that connection. Just taking a moment now, you might want to put your hands on the top of your head. Just to greet yourself there as welcome home, welcome home. Just feeling the solidity of your skull, of your ears. You can cross your arms if you want to and put one hand on each shoulder and just give your arms a little bit of a squeeze all the way down to the wrists and then the hands. You might want to dust your hands off a little bit just to release any excess energy. I'm just allowing if there's any, if you found any tension in your legs, if you've been standing or you've been that feeling that rooted sense. Now we're just going to invite a little bit of movement back into your legs now. So you might want to give your feet a little bit of a stretch. I quite like that um, stretch that you do when you put your, what's the word I want to use, sort of curl your toes under so that you do that with them and just press them very gently into the floor and just feel that nice stretch in the in the legs there it's good give yourself give your legs a little bit of a of a wiggle there as well so you can return to that power song whenever you need to and draw on the energies of um, Akano and, and Kina as those energies of earth and fire to release and then to bring that energy of earth and also to blow on the embers to allow that flow of Kina's energy to start to kindle through you. Now, some people come away from this feeling, oh, I feel energized, I feel great. Others can feel a little bit more tired because they're like, oh, actually, my body's just told me I really need to rest. So honor what your body's telling you now. I'm hungry, go and have something to eat. I'm thirsty, go and have a drink. No, you've just cleared a whole lot of excess stuff. No, that might have been um, shutting off those signals from what, from your body, from what you actually needed. Very occasionally, because of the way the Kina's room works, um, you can experience that if you had a little bit of a simmering headache, it can come to the forefront. Or if you were feeling you had a bit of a cold or something like that, it can almost get a little bit worse because Kina's is the manifester. And so it brings whatever is sort of festering inside to the surface. So if that happens, 
um, drink lots of water, bring that lagu's energy in um, and allow it to clear. So you're, you're bringing like, the water and the fire energies together there. Think about that as um, using the, the, the smith uses the water to then cool the flames afterwards. So you, that you're um, just allowing those energies to, to finish their process. Keen as, you know, it, it, it does the process. So it's a healing process, but it can um, speed up our own body's healing processes. So if that happens, you don't need to worry about that. Keep an eye on yourself, take care of yourself, listen to your body. I hope that you have enjoyed this um, little ceremony. Please do let me know if you have, you know, what, what worked for you, what came up for you. Did the Kinas rune speak to you? Did the Kano rune speak to you? How did that feel in your body? Um, do you remember to, to write up if you had anything that came through and you're like, oh, I need should remember that because you won't remember it because you were in a little bit of a, you know, just a teensy weensy, teensy weensy little trance state there. And if you enjoyed this, please do like it. Please do share it. And please do let me know.